great big lack of lightning over in this direction. It's just where I've got to do this stuff at because this is my mess area. This is where I stain and paint and everything. So, um, the barrel, as you can tell here, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Uh, I have cleaned the barrel. It's been uh, wiped down and soaked with rust and blue remover from Birchwood Casey. And I have, you know, since this gun is not going to be a shooting gun, other than possible, them low brass loads, um, I scraped as much as I could off of that, and then I used the uh, rotary sander with 320 grit um, paper on it, and just ate that stuff away. Um, now, it's much cleaner. Uh, there's a lot of nasty stuff on it. Um, I'm not going to be able to get all that pinning out. I got some of the rusty spots off, but the pitting is still deep. Um, so, with that being said, I have a bucket that's well, got some warm water in the bottom here. And I'm going to be using 400 grit wet or dry paper. Um, now with this, I'm just going to be uh, getting all the final sanding marks out. Well, the last sanding marks anyways. Oh, shoot. Uh, there won't be, this won't be the final last, or the final sanding by any means of the barrel. This is going to be, I'm going to let that sit there and soak up some water. Open it up a little bit, let it soak some water in to the paper itself. There we go. Okay. So simply I'm just going to dip it down in there so I can get all that stuff off of. And simply just, already there's a lot of stuff coming off. Get all them lines out of there from sanding with the rotary, which isn't the best way to do it, obviously. It's not the right way, but it's the only way I've got available. Um, the blue and rust remover did a pretty good job, but uh, it just wasn't taking to uh, the barrel very much because it had all that. I don't know why. I guess it would be the bluing, but uh, whatever kind of bluing that is really just sucks to take off. And so this isn't going to be all. Uh, completely clean as as clean as I want it to be. So there'll just be no way. And so we'll just have to get as close as we can. Clean the barrel up. Uh, the the breech face looks a lot better. The inside of the barrel is extremely dirty. Uh, I'm gonna try to see and see how much I can get from that out. But I'm going to bet it's not going to be very much. And to all those perverts out there, I know those can beating off a dick. But, you know, <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do to make a gun look good. So, I will uh, update you at the next spot. We'll go from there. See you later. Alright guys, so now it's time for the barrel and you may be asking an odd question as I'm gonna give you an odd answer. Um, this is the barrel. I have uh, put the perma blue on it. Um, I, you know, it was buffed to the uh, metal and shiny as can be. Or as I could get it anyways. And then I had to figure out a way to, uh, to blue it. Well, I had to blue it. I used the perma blue just like I did with the receiver and every other part. But since I don't have a steam box or uh, a bucket of any kind that's, that's uh, big enough, obviously, to dip this in, a dip tank of any kind, I, have some, I had some boiling water here. It was boiling. It's steaming now. Um, anyways... Took the boiling water, I threw the rags in it while it was boiling still, heated them up, and it's still kind of steamy, not very much though. Um, so this way it is um, basically doing the same process of sitting in the water, um, rusting it and whatnot. Uh, I hope anyways. So I hope this actually does something that I'm, this is an experimental project right here. <coughs> um, so I will I definitely have to take the... Uh, barrel and clean it out. I mean, it's, it's pitted, so I'm not going to shoot it, like I said, but um, it will, I don't want it to rust in the inside because it doesn't have the perma blue on it, so. All right, well, that is the barrel, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like after Ladies a while. and gentlemen, so what we have here is the first coat of the bluing on the barrel. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, now, like I said, with like fingerprints and stuff, <coughs> you don't want to touch your surface that you're going to be, you know, bluing with bare hands so you're going to use some gloves. Well, the wrapping in the towel technique I used didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. Um, if you can see here, 
if I can get those lines. You see them little lines there that kind of run diagonal? Let's go up here. How about that right there? That's from the t-shirt. And so this is completely steel wool. I did not wire brush this. I steel wooled all of it. Got it down as much as I could. I'll try to uh, wire brush before I do the next coat, but maybe the next coat will um, do a little more uh, cleaning it up. But uh, that's the first coat. It looks pretty good. And uh, let's see how much uh, permanent blue I have left and we can get this project done. Okay, guys, for this step, this is the, the bluing process and I know it's not the proper way. Um, I have done this multiple times with different guns and parts and it works for me and so uh, it just it's just the way it has to do it um, basically what you want them to do is make sure you have gloves on I don't have a whole lot of blue I think it's down to like maybe less than a quarter of a bottle so um, I may run it run out won't have enough to do the barrel for sure I've done some of the uh, internal parts so just the hammer and the uh, block release and whatnot. Um, this has been sanded down with up to 320 and then I got the 400 on it just a little bit because I had some 400 pads and yes there is still quite a bit of pitting but once again this is not going to be a, a shooting gun it's going to be a wall gun. Uh, over here I have a pot of boiling water in my wife's nice tea fowl pan I used it before it's clean it doesn't, well, doesn't it's going to be fine. Um, Okay, with this step, normally I would use acetone, but with the barrel and everything else that I've done so far, I ran out of my acetone. Well, you know, I thought I had enough for every, the whole project for everything, but I don't. So I wanted to use some 91% uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, to completely degrease this and make sure it's clean and free of any uh, handling, you know, dirt or whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to take this little uh, cotton pad and completely... Uh, degrease it. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of dirt on there actually. Um, now, uh, going from the professional's uh, point of view, obviously, this is not the correct way. Once again, uh, if you want a professional look on it, on your firearm, uh, this is not the way to do it. This is just the way that I have done it uh, over the years, multiple times. But I've done several firearms and several rebuilding, uh, rebuilding jobs, and it works for me. So you have to do what you do work for you. Now, if you go to professionals like, uh, say, Larry Potterfield from Midway USA, after watching a lot of his videos, he does a uh, hot box, which is basically just a box with high humidity, like 80%. And then he you know, lets it rust for an hour or so. But I don't have much time. Well, I do. But that's not how I do my process. Um, we'll just test this out on video and see what it works. Um, I, instead of using like the big uh, cotton swab, like the big uh, sponges, I just like to do, uh, you know, one Q tip at a time. Um, you got the perma blue here. This is Birchwood Casey liquid perma blue. Uh, they do have a paste that you can put on and use the same way, but it seems to work a little bit faster. Um, just dip it down in there. Make sure you're not contaminating. So once this, this is uh, out of the bottle and onto the metal, um, you do not want to put it back into the bottle. So we'll just see what it does here. And like I said, this is all completely um, sanded down with uh, 320 down to 400 and then brushed. Um, I'm probably not going to get exactly what I want look wise um, just because it probably won't work. Something in the trash can there. And it takes a little bit to uh, get to every little area. Not every area will soak it up right away. And so, 
I'll bring it back as soon as I have all this covered because uh, it's going to be a lengthy process just trying to cover all this. See you then. Okay guys, so I have it uh, completely covered in the perma blue and what you see now is I'm just I kind of like doing the humidity thing because I don't have a humidity box, a, a you know heat box at all and so I'm just kind of getting the steam across it and I see it is rusting like it should be. Um, it is obviously not polished like it was. It is bluing. That's doing what it's supposed to do. And you kind of see the little droplets and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the uh, water. But to do so, I'm going to um, simply, there's a bar in here I can grab onto. I'm going to lay it in there for just a little bit. That's more water. I boiled quite a bit off of it. And obviously, with the bluing, on, the perma blue on your hands, you want to be careful with anything you cover, anything you touch will get uh, the blue on. Well, you know, it's metal, anyways. And so that is still hot. I'll let that sit there for a little bit, and. Uh, Obviously, you want to get your gloves off because it will, um, it will blue anything you touch, really. But uh, now I'm down to this is a three ounce tilted. It's just right there at the end, there are the tips there. So I'm not going to have enough for the rest of the barrel. I will have um, enough for the parts I need to do, but uh, not a, not enough for the rest of the. Again, so I'll have to get some more perma blue. Um, and the next step after this will be taking the uh, wire wheel and buffing it, and then probably doing it again. Uh, most likely, because you can use uh, quadru you know uh, double number four uh, steel wool. I'll probably just go ahead and steel wool this instead of wire wheel it, so everything looks uniform. Um, that's as much as I can do on my end uh, to make it look uh, pretty good so um, this project it will look good in the end but uh, anyways until then thanks for watching alright guys so I have steamed off enough of the uh, water now it's down about half inch I'm gonna go ahead and grab this out of here probably not the best thing to do but um, let's just kinda steam off you can see there there's a nice little coat of rust build up which obviously is what bluing is, it's just a rust um, so I'm going to let the sun put this on the towels there and uh, let it cool off and then I'm going to change the water out and then I'm going to take and buff the crap out of this with uh, steel wool and you know, the rust is popping up like crazy and a wire wheel with a Dremel and then we'll see what all it does uh, make sure it doesn't really go and uh, you know go back to the stainless you know polished but we will just go ahead and do like so and we'll see what goes on from there alright after 30 minutes of having these four parts in the boiling water I just pulled them up about 30 seconds ago had to dump the water because it had a lot of uh, rust build up in the pan so Try to pull it up and let it sit there for a little bit longer. Okay, um, these are extremely hot, so um, you can see what it looks like so far, right there. Just a little comparison, and I'll do a, an after shot too. It's going to look much better than that, obviously. But I'm going to let this sit there, and it will rust a little bit. Hey, that's hot, really hot. Well, not so much there, but. It will rust a little bit more. It will see right there. That will keep on building up on all these parts. And uh, you will have to uh, go in, buff them out. Alright, guys, so we're going on about seven days into the project, and I'm still working on the stock, the butt stock. 
Um, as we can see here, it has got some spots on it. That is from uh, more uh, varnish, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, strip paint stripper. Uh, I had to do another coat of that to get some more varnish off of it. But uh, that is my next step. Right now, I am still working on the bluing, obviously. Um, all the bluing has gone into one day. This is two steps of bluing, and this is one. I do want it a little bit darker, but I do want it nice and shiny like this, because that is awesome looking. Um, if you can see there, obviously, like once again, the pitting is going to show like crazy. Uh, the rust was just so so thick on this before you know. Before I got on film the first time, I had already scraped most of the rust off. This was extremely thick, and so I still got a little bit of work to do yet. After this second job, I had to, uh, I, I wire brushed all of this and then I had to actually physically do steel wool on the receiver because my little wire brush for my Dremel is bad. So I have to go, I'll have to go to Lowe's and pick another couple of those up. But um, for now, uh, this is what I've got. I've got, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't do this in for internal part because I don't want it to be done. Um, but I've got uh, the trigger guard, the receiver, the hammer done. Looks pretty slick, right? The uh, locking bolt release. And the little treads there. We'll see if it'll focus in there. They look pretty good, too. Look nice and shiny. Um, and then if you get a trigger, the trigger has a little bit of a, had quite a bit of rust on it. Let's see if it'll focus there. And so it's not as buffed clean. I tried and I tried and tried, but I didn't want to get the sander on it and do a 350 or 320 on it or 400. So a little bit of texturing is not going to bother. But the sides will look good because they are pretty buff, buffed out. And then the uh, fore end uh, part. So this will look like so, and they're pretty much matched as can be. Um, I'm excited for this. Now my next project to blue will be the barrel. But while that is going being, before I do that, I have to get here. This is plugged. I had to plug this because the, the holes were bored out. Um, as you can see there, they're not going to be matching up. So I'll have to do a little bit of uh, filing work to get that to go flat. And I really just want a new foreign all together because that does not match up at all. But that's just what I have to work with. So. Uh, that'll be another section of the video. This is probably going to be like an eight or nine part video uh, because I know my last part was just uh, like, I don't know, 15 minutes. So, anyways, uh, with that being said, see you in the next part.